are following breaking news right now as the Buffalo Sabres are introducing their new head coach. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nalina Shapiro. The Sabres have hired former Pittsburgh Penguins head coach Dan Bilesma. The team turned to Bilesma after failing to land Mike Babcock. Let's listen in live. Uh, thank you, uh, Tim and the Pagulas and Ted Black for uh, the opportunity to come here to the Buffalo Sabres organization and be the head hockey coach. Uh, there is, a, I think, a bright future ahead for this team. A lot of young, great hockey players uh, here and on the way to the Buffalo Sabres organization and uh, a fan base that's passionate about uh, the game of hockey, having had that experience coming here as a, as a player and as a coach from the opposition, a, a great fan base that's uh, hungry to, to be a championship team and an ownership uh, that is uh, committed to putting a championship and a winning team on the ice and, and looking forward uh, to being a part of that and developing that as, as the Sabres go forward. Chris and Ian have the mics. Uh, Chris, if you want to go first, if you could just stand up and state your name and who the questions to, please. Sensitive. Hey, Coach, Sean Stepner from Channel 7 here in Buffalo. Um, when did you target the Buffalo Sabres opening? What piqued your interest about this job? Take us through that process of, uh, of what led to today. Well, I, I don't think uh, it happened in the last... Uh, you know, days is when the Buffalo Sabres and, and their situation is uh, unfolded uh, over a period of time. And as a coach uh, uh, sitting on the sidelines, uh, I looked at that opportunity from a distance for, for some time now. Um, you know, again, I mentioned the, the quality of players, the, the, the players, the youthful players that are coming into this organization and, and what they could be down the road. I looked at that for, for some period of time and obviously not until um, the last a month or so was it even a possibility to, to think about uh, in terms of uh, contacting the Sabres and, and talking with Tim. So uh, it may have happened over a longer period of time than that, but for me, uh, this has been one I, I really looked at and, and uh, as this an opportunity to, to develop with a team, develop with an organization, and, and put a winning team on the ice, and um, that's happened over a period of time. Paul? Dan Paul Hamilton from WGR. How much, you've done a lot of studying and seen a lot of hockey the past year. Do you see yourself evolving as a coach? Do you see maybe your philosophies being a little bit different than maybe they were before with as much as you've studied the past year? Yeah, I, I probably look, watched uh, more hockey games than I really uh, wanted to this past season, and I'm, I'm quite confident my wife thinks I watched too much hockey games this past season. But uh, it, it has afforded me the opportunity to look at the game from a, a distance, look at different aspects of the game, um, and uh, question, uh, even grow as a coach. And, and I've talked with I've, I've talked with uh, pro coaches. Uh, I've been a part of some amateur coaching the past year and and uh i do think you know just in, even in terms of uh how you play the game and, and what's important and evolving as a coach i've i've done quite a bit of growing the last last year and looking at the game and and so i i hope to and plan to bring that uh, to the coach i will be for the savers mike and then adam who's Dan, over here to your left, Mike Harrington of the Buffalo News. You, you talked about watching a lot of hockey games. Certainly there's going to be a lot of changes on the ice here, but what are your first thought impressions of some of the guys you saw with the Sabres who will likely be back? And secondly, I think the question everyone wants to hear, you had up close and personal views, television and coaching of Jack Eichel. What are your impressions of him potentially going forward? And what's it like for you to get the chance when that pick is made to coach a guy like him? What? I think uh, there's a number of, of pieces of the Sabres that you looked at the last year and, and watched them play. I think the defensemen, um, they're big, strong, they're young defensemen developing certainly uh, last year. But I, I'm talking to some coaches around the league about uh, playing against the Sabres. They talk about that uh, being an aspect of what they, what they do have. Uh, and I, I look forward to that aspect of, of the Buffalo Sabres. I, I have... I think uh, some of the pieces that are in place currently that are, you know, Matt Molson's a guy I've really enjoyed, well, not really enjoyed watching, but coaching against and know Matt a little bit and 
Uh, Tyler Ennis is a dynamic player. I think he's dynamic every time he t- steps onto the ice. Um, and then you start to, to look at some of the pieces that are, are going to be coming to the organization. I think um, going to be getting some very good hockey players coming here, ones that have been drafted already and turning pro, and, and some, as you mentioned, uh, the possibility of what uh, future picks might be for the, for the Sabres. And, um, you know, in reference to Jack... Eichel, having coached him at the World Championships, um, a you, you have a chance to see a guy who's going to be an elite, elite player. He's got outstanding skill, and you see him play against men. A lot of NHL players were there. He matched up against Evgeny Malkin when we played Russia, and he he's playing against Thomas Bukhanek when we play against the Czech uh, in the in the bronze medal game. He's playing against NHL players, and and he stacked up you know, right up there with his skill and his size and his ability to play the game. So, um, you know, Jack's going to be a, a good pick for anybody who does take him. Adam? And, uh, Adam Benini, WGRZ TV, Buffalo. Uh, just your thought as kind of a natural follow to that, looking at a lot of the assets this organization has, the stage of the rebuild they're at, what time frame would you suggest uh, for, for a highly competitive roster? Yeah, I, I don't uh, think there's a, a time frame that you're going to put on uh, certain aspects of success or where this team's going to be. Um, I think there's it's not a, a situation where you're in a, a teardown, total rebuild at this point in time. They've gone through some of that. Um, and I know you know, right now in our process of development as a team, we're looking to get better pretty every day. We we step on the ice. We're looking to get better right now uh, as an organization, uh, even before we step on the ice. So um, there's not a, a a situation or a time frame or this is where we're going to be at or this is where we need to be at tomorrow. We know we need to get better and keep getting better every day. Bill? Tim, uh, Bill Hoppy. Uh, why is Dan the right man for this job at this time? Well, I think his record um, as an NHL head coach speaks for itself. Um, high winning percentage, a lot of wins uh, in a short period of time. Uh, great communicator. Obviously, we're going to be a young team. We need somebody that knows how to teach and knows how to communicate. And uh, it's not just telling somebody what to do. It's, it's why they have to do that. And um, there aren't a lot of coaches that can do that. I think Dan is one of them that can. So it's a, it's a teaching process. Um, again, get improve a little bit every day. Um, and we improve today. So this is part of the process of getting better. We improve today by hiring him. Um, so it's a communication skills. It's, uh, we can talk about X's and O's and all that later, but it's a communication, it's teaching, it's uh, understanding young people, understanding what they're going through. Um, I think he's very good at those aspects of the game. John? Dan, John Warrow with the Associated Press. Um, you make the transition from a team that was led by Sidney Crosby and of Jenny Malkin to a team that has a bit, a bit more of a clean slate to it. How do you change your approach or how do you, uh, how do you change your mindset in some ways, you know, making that switch from where you were two years ago? Well, I don't think I'm going to change my mindset on, on winning a hockey game. Um, but there is a, a certain a development, um, not only to uh, this team and this organization, is developing a, a culture and a winning culture of this group and this team, and that's something that we have to do and, and do every day. And when the expectation uh, for your team is to win every game, uh, that's maybe a different expectation than, than uh, what we're dealing with with the Buffalo Sabres moving forward, but the expectation for the winning culture and how we play is not going to change. Uh, and and uh, that's going to start starting today, and it will continue to go as we develop with this group and these players going forward. Joe? Uh, Dan, Joe Yarden, Art. NHL.com. Uh, what did you learn most from your time in Pittsburgh that you look forward to applying to this Sabres team that's not as far along as that Penguins team was, but in a spot where they're going to grow under your tutelage? Well, I, it's a 
Long, quite long answer to that question because there's more than just one thing I can say. I, I learned as a as a coach, and things that I learned that I'm going to apply to this group of coach star players uh, in Pittsburgh, and that's going to be the case. You know, maybe with the young talent that's coming to the Buffalo Sabers, um, but really the uh, developing the winning of the culture of winning and developing that with with your group and with your team and. Is going to be uh, something I learned uh, with the Pittsburgh Penguins. It's something we uh, developed. Uh, it wasn't something that uh, you had just because you had certain players on your roster. And that's something that we have to immediately get into the Buffalo Sabres organization, get into our DNA, get into who we are and how we play, and develop that culture with this with this group. It's, it's a different group. It's a young group. It's a... Uh, a group that's on the rise in terms of their talent and their ability, but that is something that we uh, are going to have to do and, and uh, do here with the Sabres organization. Sean? Hey, Coach. Sean, again, from Channel 7 ABC here in Buffalo. When do you anticipate, uh, if you already haven't, meeting with players, select players? Who, who will they be? Um, how do you kind of start developing that culture that you're talking about? Have you met with players yet? Uh, I have met with a few players already, um, and I anticipate uh, that there will not be a player that I don't meet with at some point in time, whether that's uh, conversations with here in Buffalo or over the phone at some point in time. So, um, you know, I think that's a, a big aspect of getting to know the, the players and the team and the expectations of what we're going to have for them on the ice, um, and that will happen uh, somewhat impromptu sometimes, but uh, I will be meeting with uh, the players as well individually. And what was that? Yeah, the, uh, can you use the microphone, please, Sean? Thank you. What players have you met? You said you met with players. Uh, Evander Kane and Josh Georges. Mike, over here. Dan, Mike Harrington again. Uh, you spent your time in that offseason, I know, studying the game, studying a lot about analytics. As analytics has exploded here, you're coming to a team that is basically the worst possession team in the history of the analytics era. Now, the first thing to improve on that is obviously Thank people you. is like, get better players. Yes. But, and that's certainly what they're working toward. What philosophically, as a coach, do you look at as points of emphasis to drive that puck possession that turns into winning hockey? What can you do to help get them into the area they want to be? Well, we have great room for improvement. So we, we have that ahead of us, and we will. Um, but I, I really do think, it, talk about analytics and puck possession, I think the you look at four teams that are having success right now and, and fighting tonight and tomorrow night to get to the Stanley Cup finals are uh, great teams. They play uh, somewhat different in, in a lot of the ways they play, but they all can defend and they all can defend and keep the puck out of their net. And sometimes I think with the, the key to puck possession is being able to defend and, and doing it quickly and being great at transitioning the other way. So um, by defending better, we will be better in the other end. Our analytics will improve by being that type of team. Steve? Steve Easy from WIBB in Buffalo. Dan, do you feel like you have anything extra to prove because of the way everything ended in Pittsburgh and, you know, being out of hockey for a year, do you feel like you have anything more to prove than maybe, uh, you know, another coach that would have come into this situation? That is uh, in no way or shape the reason why I coach and want to coach and uh, why I had any interest in coaching the Buffalo Sabres. I, uh, I don't look at it that way at all. I look at the opportunity to uh, come to an organization, develop with its team, and, and uh, develop into a winning, a winning culture and a winning team, and, and uh, I, I'm not, I'm not coaching to prove anything to anybody else. John, Dan, John Scott, Time Warner Cable News here in Buffalo. Um, what role did the Pagulas have in your decision to come here to Buffalo? When the, I, th I think uh, right away, many years ago, 2011, um, we're not that far away. I've met. At different times, uh, Mr. Pagula, and right away the the want, the passion, and the desire to bring a winning team uh, to Buffalo and this organization was evident right away. 
even though I was uh, three and a half hours away from here. And so it, I have talked with the Pagulas recently. We've met, and but to me that right away was uh, something I took note of, saw from a distance, and uh, I was in the middle of some other things at the time, but you, you want to be a part of, of that type of organization. You want to be a part of that type of, of team. And, and uh, I knew that 2011. Brian? Brian Mazarowski, WBEN. When you took the job in Pittsburgh, three months later, you're hoisting the Stanley Cup. This time around, it's obviously going to be different. Is that a challenge you were actively seeking out, maybe, a younger team? I don't think I had a prerequisite or a, a notion that that was the case. You know, I, in Pittsburgh, we, we did, you know, three months later, win a Stanley Cup, sometimes that uh, presents you with a, a downhill battle from the beginning. Um, but um, this is a different situation uh, with different expectations at, th at this moment or where it's going to go in development of the team, but uh, didn't have any, any uh, it wasn't more advantageous to me to look at a situation like this. To, to um, So, no, it didn't play into the decision. Adam. Hi, Dan. Uh, Adam Benini again, sorry. Um, one of the aspects uh, making the, the, the transition, say, from a Pittsburgh uh, to a Buffalo, one of the positive aspects had been the fact you dealt with elite talent, Sydney, for example, and others on that team. How do you project maybe that experience to dealing with a young group like this and a guy like Eichel and perhaps some others? I think you understand uh, immediately the spotlight that is on those types of players uh, and the star quality players. Uh, you understand uh, the pressures that they will be going through, the, the analysis and the, the little eyes on them from just about everybody and in, in how they live, how they walk, and how they play the game. And, and uh, I've probably learned as much uh, from uh, working with those players, working with Sidney Crosby and Kenny, as, as they did from me. And uh, I think it's going to be applicable to the likes of Sam Reinhardt and, and Jack Eichel, who um, are going to be in different development stages, are going to be different points in their career, but are, are going to be viewed in that same, same light, in that same scope that we, that star players are put into. And, but you know, I, I worked briefly with Jack and, and Coach Jack, um, you know, I'm also going to remind him of, of the hard work and, and uh, all the things, the details that go into how star players play. And that's just as important as maybe having dealt with the scope of a, a star player and, and coaching him. Jim? Jim, thank you. Coach, what do the Buffalo Sabres need right now if you had your wish list of three or four things to make this team immediately better? I think... Uh, you're talking in a hypothetical. We just uh, have talked over the last 24 hours about this job and, and the Buffalo Sabres, and I'm, I'm not quite ready to, to go through hypotheticals and what wish lists of what we might might need. But we're we're developing. We have good pieces. We have good people. We have young talent and a team that's going to grow and develop, and I think going to grow and develop into a, a very good hockey team and down the road in the near future. We have a couple more questions. Steve. Steve, ECW, IVB. Tim, Dan's talked a couple times about developing a winning culture. How, uh, how important was that to you in this coaching search to find somebody who, uh, you know, not only has won, but, you know, has won it all at this level? Well, I think this hiring is the, uh, as I said earlier, we've got better today. Uh, we have a long ways to go. We, we're, we plan on getting better every day, but um, he's been through it. Um, Stanley Cup final as a player, uh, winning a Stanley Cup as a coach. Um, to me, he's a winner. He knows what it takes to get there, uh, how, to, how to perform when you are there. Um, so there's a lot of lessons that he can give to young players, and that's part of the culture. Uh, we've been trying to change the culture here every day, um, but this, this, is a, this is a big swing to the positive. And... Um, you know, we'll work together on this, and uh, you know that that's my cliche: improve a little bit every day. But um, 
he's he's done something that I haven't done. He's won a cup, um, so he's had an experience that I haven't had. Uh, he can he can teach me about that experience. He can teach the rest of the people in our organization, uh, our equipment staff, our, our medical training staff, our, uh, including the players, so that we walk around here and 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 think like winners, eventually act like winners, and become winners. So he's a big piece in that. Mike and then Sean, and then we'll wrap up. Mike. Dan, Michael Morosiak from WBFO Radio. Uh, several years ago, you and your father co-authored a book about your own rise to the NHL as a player, one that uh, you chronicled your ups and downs and was definitely not an easy road. How, how often do you fall back on your own personal experiences when working with young talent like you did with uh, Sid and, 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 and Ginny in, in Pittsburgh and the many young stars you'll have here to, to show them that it's not necessarily something that even with their talent they should take for granted? Well, I just had a conversation with, with someone who said sometimes the, the, the most difficult role in the, in the players that have had to work and uh, gone through different uh, levels, setbacks, perseverance in their game are, are turn out to be the best coaches. And I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, there's not a lot in the game that I haven't experienced as a player in terms of um, setbacks, getting sent down, uh, not getting contract playing the minors, playing in the East Coast League, um, playing for different teams. Uh, I've played with excellent players. I've played with star players. I've played on bad teams. I've played on winning teams. Uh, so I have a vast experience, and I was planning uh, to be a coach long before I was done playing. And uh, so uh, I think that's all a part of of me as a coach, of how I coach, and, and uh, I certainly drawn on all those, aven all those avenues and all those experiences uh, as a coach and, and will, again, as a Sabres coach. All right, so you've just been listening live right now at the First Niagara Center to new Sabres head coach Dan Bilesma, former Pittsburgh Penguins coach, and GM Tim Murray also sitting beside him there. A couple of things that stood out to me that he said Steve Vesey, our sports director, asked him about being out of the league for a year, and Bilesma responded by saying that he's not here to prove anything to anyone else. Basically, he just wants to win. So again, Dan Bilesma is the 17th head coach in Sabres history. He did win a Stanley Cup in uh, one of his six seasons, again, with the Pittsburgh Penguins, Bilesma won the Jack Adams Award in 2011 as the NHL's most outstanding coach. And again, he said that he's here to win. And a lot of coaches have said that. Of course they want to win. So we're going to have much more on this developing story coming up on News 4 at 5 and 6. For now, we're going to send it back to the regular programming.